the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Maybe for a lot of us, one of our first memories with planting seeds as children is putting sunflower seeds in the back garden and then waiting to see which one grows the tallest. Or maybe at school, putting cress seeds in a plastic container with a little bit of water on some cotton wool, then waiting a few days before being able to proudly bring home a whole margarine tub of green shoots, enough perhaps to make half a cress sandwich, which most of the time little children don't really like the taste of anyway. For us then, we put seeds where they're going to grow. We don't choose the stony path for the sunflower seed or the middle of the thorn bush. We choose the best bit of soil in the garden that we have, or a pot. The parable of the sower presents us with a kind of weird sower. It's almost like he doesn't seem to be doing a very good job. If you sow seed on the path, of course it's going to attract birds. If you sow seed in the shallow ground, of course, it's never going to take deep roots. But this is telling us something about the nature of our Lord. He is always reaching out with his grace to everyone, even those who are far from him. And even when those graces are quickly wasted by those who receive them, they get an answer to prayer, but then they forget about it the next minute and don't allow God's action in their life to change them, to convert them fully to his friendship. Our Lord's death, the graces he won for us, the forgiveness he earned for us, it is for everyone. It's like the seed being sprinkled everywhere. But tragically, how few respond. As one prayer to Jesus crucified puts it, Alas, my Lord, how much of that precious blood you shed has been wasted. How few souls are saved. Often when we look at this parable, we kind of think to ourselves, which soil am I like? That's the classic sermon that you get on this uh, parable. Am I allowing the word of God to take a deep root in my life, to transform me? Or am I letting distractions and disappointments and the cares of the world chip away at my commitment? But I think probably the original purpose of this parable was for the benefit of our Lord's disciples, those who he called to share with him in the job of sowing the seed. I think he's trying to explain to them what they could expect from the next years of their life as they took on the task of preaching the Catholic faith to the whole world. So for the disciples hearing the parable, they aren't asking themselves, what kind of soil am I? They aren't even a category of soil. They are sowers. Obviously, a sower has got to get the seed from somewhere. So in one sense, of course, the disciples are that rich soil that continues to yield fruit to produce more seeds. But like I said, in the first instance, the parable is not so much asking them the question, what kind of soil am I? And more like a kind of, here is what you can expect from the next 30 years of your lives. There's going to be growth. There's going to be lives transformed. But there's going to be a lot of seemingly wasted hours. And this parable is going to explain to you why that is. In short, our Lord tells them, when you don't see success, don't be surprised. You are up against mighty powerful enemies, the world, the flesh, and the devil. But in spite of that, there will be breakthroughs. So keep persevering, keep sharing your faith and do it as broadly as the sower in this parable. Because unlike with your back garden, where it seems obvious which areas are going to be good soil, it isn't like that with souls, not always. When it comes to souls, first impressions can be very mistaken. And what looks like a stony path is actually fertile soil that has just got hard in the sun and is only waiting for a bit of rainfall to soften it. That's why we should always be ready to share our faith with others, especially when we see an opening, but also more broadly. 
people should know that we are Catholics. People in our class at school should know that we are at Mass on Sundays. It should be something natural and obvious to the people that may be our swimming class, the book group, the workplace. Not something imposed weirdly, but naturally manifested in our conversation topics and how we act. In the years uh, when I was in the Legion of Mary, but also now as a priest, I've seen some, what you might think are extremely unlikely characters becoming Catholics or returning to the Catholic faith, at least from a first impression. What I mean is, we shouldn't presume we are dealing with a stony pathway just because there's a kind of firmness. And maybe what seems like vicious forms, maybe they are actually weeds that are on their last legs and will quickly give way to the strong new growth. The parable of the sower then, when you begin with the question, what kind of soil am I, isn't totally helpful. And the other reason is, none of us are probably one type of soil entirely. There are parts of our hearts not fully open to God. And there are some parts that are more open. Probably there are some topics that if I mentioned at Holy Mass, it would be like the seed would be blown away immediately for some of you. Um, it might be different things to different people. And we need to be aware of that. When we see that seed being blown away, picked off by the devil, we need to be aware of that and later on go back to that teaching and try and ponder why this might be the case, how that can be corrected. Because it's not like I'm sharing a different religion. I'm sharing the Catholic faith and it's my job to share it in its entirety. And then probably at the same time, there are maybe other teachings that I might share which you're going to be really receptive to. And maybe already there's a lot of fruit in your life being, being born in, in those areas. So we're not so much types of soil. Each of us is more like a gardener over a patch of land. We aren't static symbol, single types of ground that can never change. We're not ground that's just entirely passive. Um, we are gardeners responsible for the land that God's grace is forever being sown upon. And we need to keep an eye on what is happening when the seeds are landing, both at Sunday Mass, but also when you're praying each day, when you're reading, reading books by the saints and listening to Catholic sermons on YouTube. God is expecting a return. He is expecting when he returns for your garden to be in order. I was at my brother's house yesterday for a baptism of their third child and I noticed him and his wife had done some great work clearing out the garden, getting rid of weeds and bushes and bits of rubble the previous owners had left behind. But they've only completed phase one. Really the, the bigger job is phase two, making the garden beautiful, putting some turf down and working on the flower beds. Caring for our souls isn't just about keeping out a mortal sin, so we're not on the verge of going to hell. But tending the garden of our souls is trying to produce something beautiful for God, cooperating with his grace on a daily basis. The parable closes with our Lord speaking delightfully, joyfully about the rich soil and the crop that it's produced. There's a sense in which if your soul has become that beautiful garden for the Lord, then you give Almighty God such an immense delight that it makes up to him for all those who just ignore him or reject him. Wouldn't that be an amazing thing, an awesome thing, for God to look down proudly upon you, seeing the transformation that's taken place in your soul, and for that beauty to make up to him for all those who are living far from him. Maybe it's like how one successful sunflower reaching six foot in the back garden somehow seems to make up for the 20 seeds that got nowhere. But the great thing about being that sunflower is that within you, you contain the seeds for a new harvest. Because growing up, growing up towards God is never something purely for your benefit. It involves an impulse to share that faith with others. You are responsible 
for the landscaping of your soul, for making it something pleasing to God through prayer and hard work. But you are also called to be a sower, sharing your faith with others, cooperating with God in order to yield for him a rich harvest. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.